At this point, we are able to show classes. We are able to add classes. I just added class 99. Um, and remember, we had those four operations, those four basic operations of a database. Add to the database, show the database, uh, update documents in the database, and delete documents in the database. Let's address first deleting a document in the database. And for the moment, we will do this not so elegantly, because we just want this to work. But then when we get it back into our app, where we've got jQuery mobile and all of that, we can then make it look nice. For the moment, we will just make it look kind of basic. But we want to delete, we want to delete a class from the database. And then ideally, my idea is, like I've seen in many apps, okay, here's my data, I want to click on that one and choose to delete it. We won't be able to do that yet, because that's more complex stuff with, uh, with jQuery mobile and so forth. The basic way that we'll do it is, all of these have a unique ID, CRN. So if I want to delete English 3, I just type English, uh, I just type 125, delete. We're going to delete a class based on its CRN. That's the unique identifier. So we're going to get back into our code here. And, and again, we're going to do this just in a basic way, and then we'll make it look nice later. But we're going to add some fields to delete, to delete the classes. So uh, we'll do it like this. At the end, at the end, uh, okay, line 82 is where we end the table. This is every row of data, then the end of the table. Let's add a new line before, before showing the string in the div. So add a new line, 83. We'll add to the string some more, plus equals. In quotes, we'll write the HR tag. Anyone remember what HR was? We saw this a long time ago. <coughs> horizontal rule. That's just a simple little line. It's going to draw a line, a horizontal rule line. And then we're, we're going to have an input box for the person to type in CRN125, for example, and then a button that says delete. We're going to delete that. CRN that they've chosen. We need an input box. So we'll type the input tag. HR doesn't have a pair. Input doesn't have a pair. But we do need to... give it um, a type. So type equals, single quotes, text. We had input boxes up at the top previously, input of type text, uh, which includes numbers. Those numbers that we've been uh, writing for the CRNs are included. So then um, we will add uh, space. We didn't do this for the other input boxes, but we'll see that this is cool. We have something called placeholder. You've seen input boxes on different websites and such where it asks you for your username, for example, and it has a placeholder text that says it must be in the format of whatever, at, whatever. Right? This is placeholder text, so equals single quotes. And whatever we write in here is what we'll display on screen as a placeholder. So let's just say, to give people an idea, just one, two, three. We're expecting for the person to write a, a CRN number here, CRN123, for example. And this will also need an ID. This input box will need an ID so that we can reference it via the code. So ID equals, single quotes, delete CRN.
This input box is a box that will accept, an, uh, will accept a CRN to delete the class. Still inside of the quotes, um, we will now add a button tag. And button does have a pair. So we have the input box, and then we have a button. In between the, the button tags, this is where we can write the text, which we will write delete CRN. This is the text that's going to appear in the button. And we also need an ID here for this button so that when we click the button, something will happen. So that needs ID equals single quotes. We'll call it delete class. Let's uh, save it and run it. It's not going to do anything yet, but I want to, I'm expecting to see a line, an input box, and a button. Let's see if that works so far. You want to click Show Classes. You get your table, you get a line, an input box, which automatically, one, two, three, if you click inside of it, you can type whatever, and then a button. The button doesn't do anything yet. This is what we've got so far. And here's the code. It's a bit long, but in this case we are not, we can't break it because the whole thing is in quotes. Notice we could break these into separate lines because we opened and closed the quotes and then we could break it, but all of this is one long line, so we can't break it. If we do, it will try to break it on screen. But again, we've got input, type text, placeholder, ID, and then a button with an ID also. Question? Okay, so we need then for that button to do something. We need to define a function so that when we click the button, it will delete the class based on what the person wrote in that box. We've been so far, well, we've written all of this. This has all been inside of the show table of classes. So we've shown the table of classes, and there's a button to delete a class. We need to define what that button does. So outside of that table, in my case, it's line 86. We're going to create another function. We're going to create a new function. We'll call it delete class. We're using the same name as the ID on the on the button. We're going to make this work in a moment, but I just want to see if my code is working so far, so we'll do an alert. Let's say we are about to delete a class. We'll just write gibberish. But um, I want to make sure that we are accessing this delete class function. When we press that button. So before we save it and run it, that means then we need another 
sort of unclick like this. This unclick may be add classwork. This unclick may be show classes work. So we're going to need an unclick to make the delete class work. So on line 91, we'll do basically the same thing here. Dollar sign, parentheses. This is jQuery. We're accessing some element on the screen. The element is the button that has the ID delete class. We'll do on click function delete class function. So we're using the ID here, and then we will use the function dot on on click. comma, function, curly braces. So just the same as the previous two. The difference, of course, is what object are we talking about, what idea are we talking about, and what function, then, are we going to run? Daily class. And you want to make sure that here you've got the, the pound symbol because it's an ID. And then over here is the are the parentheses because it's the function. I think at this point we have enough so that we can at least test a little bit. Uh, you want to save it and run it. Show the classes. Click the button to delete class. You don't have to put anything in the box yet. That doesn't work yet. But if you click the button to delete the class, you should get a pop-up that says, we are about to delete a class. Let's see if mine works. a little bit something here. We're getting a little more complex here because here's the code and this is saying okay there's an object on the screen uh, called delete class. When we click it, run the delete class function. I saved it and run it. Didn't work. Probably didn't work for anyone. Because what's going on is remember when we write HTML this is going to work on things that exist at the moment that we ran the code. Um, that button right here, this button did not exist until we clicked show table of classes. So then this code doesn't know. There is no delete class. As soon as you run the HTML file and it looks for delete class, it doesn't exist. Delete class button does not exist until someone clicks the show class button. So we actually have to be a little more specific here. So this code assumes all of the things are right on the screen. This one is not. So in this one, we have to say it's slightly different. Um, that button, this delete CRN button, is inside of a container, a placeholder. What's that placeholder again? The result. Everything that we're showing on screen is in the placeholder, the result. So the trick is we have to first say the result. We have to say pay attention to the, to the div, to the placeholder called the result. 
and then inside of here is on click, and then comma. After the after the click after comma in quotes, the ID of delete class, comma. Okay, so basically, I moved delete class out of uh, the dollar sign here. I moved it over here. Click, comma, here, comma, the rest. I moved it out, and we're saying, let's pay attention to that placeholder div, the result. And then when there's a click specifically on that button in that placeholder, then do the delete class function. Give that a try. Notice the code is a little more detailed now. Let's see if mine worked. Show classes, click delete TRN, pop up. We are about to delete a class. Let's pause there because I did have to change it. Did anyone miss that? Anyone need to? Okay, let's do this. Double click to the class right here. Which one?
kinds of non-trivial unit class that are always there. Put it inside of short unit classes. So I can't find it. It's trying to find the classes, but it can't be inside the table. And I don't know. Does this need to be outside of that code base? That curly really brace is yeah, in yeah, yeah. the show table. <laughs> hey, we saw it's an it's idea of the, the table, right? Of this up our table. It's not it's not only the table, it's everything with everything being displayed. Right, yeah, the result which is uh, all the this is our different this is a display of the right. of the but um what I'm looking at is that I mean it's not like in the same hierarchy that we have to go from the parent to the child or to the grandchild in order to, to get there and make the thing work, you know what I mean? Because it's totally specific and what do we oh, a that? It is? It is a child because the way we've done it is we've got the result data and then um, we're starting to build the string and we create the table, we end the table and then we create the button. We're still putting it in some string and we're going to output them into the same div. So that button is a child of the of the div because it's still being added to the same string we've been using all along. Uh, I'm sorry, that's definitely the same thing as in this way? Yeah, that, that dollar div um, is that result. If, if you scroll back down, that dollar div uh, okay. is what's good. Bar, create the dollar div. Like a separate, mm, not really visually, connected. visually yeah. it's separate, yeah. but it's still the same object. We just visually separated it, but it's still the same object. It's all inside of the string here, so it's one object. That's what it is. Anyway, I don't know what I mean, but I'm just seeing it's not really mm -hmm. basic. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 That long one over here? Yeah, the long one over here. Yeah, the long one over here.
I see what you mean why, because then it's all connected by the screen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we keep doing crossing yeah, codes, so it's yeah, still all connected. It's connected. It's connected in the code, but not visual. Right, so this was just to confirm we've got uh, the ability to click on this button. And that, do you see here that we had to do it slightly differently because this button did not exist until we clicked Show Classes. So we had to specify here is the parent element, here is the child element. On these ones, these are all parent elements. These are just found right away as soon as the document loads. Add class, Show Class. They're there as soon as the document loads. But this one doesn't appear until you show that content, and therefore it's a child of the, of the result div. So we have to specify. Let's look at the parent, you'll find this child, and then that's why that works. Um, okay, so we have the button, it works. Let's actually make it delete a class. So this is going to assume that the person is going to type in the number, for example, 007. And they'll click delete, and it'll delete it. Uh, so that means our delete class, this alert, you can comment it out or delete it because we know that delete class works. The button does something. So what we need to do is, um, next line 88, create a variable. Uh, this will be a jQuery var variable, so we'll call it dollar the class. I'm going to use jQuery. Whatever the person types in here, I want to capture that. That's what this is for. We're going to capture the class that they typed in a variable. That's going to come from, so equals, that's going to come from the uh, that placeholder, that input, that input box, which we called delete CRN. Delete CRN, yes. So we're going to call that equals dollar parentheses, quotes, uh, pound sign, delete CRN. So up here we've created this input box, line 83. We created an input box and we named it delete CRN. Right here we're retrieving what the person types into it to put it into the variable. The person, whatever they typed into it, at the end of that, and we have dot val. Give me the value of whatever they typed into the input box uh, and then put it in the variable. Just to see if that's working, let's do some console output. I'm going to say in the console, display that variable, whatever a person types into that delete CRN input box. Save it and run it. Let's type something into that box. Let's click that button and look in your console to see if it recognized what you typed. Pull up my console, show class. I'm just going to type something. One, 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 one. Delete. Shows up in my console. That's what I typed. We're, we're getting there, but at least here the button, the delete CRN, is recognizing whatever we type inside of it, and it shows up in the console. That's what that line is saying. Give me the value of what the person types into that input box, put it in that variable, and then show that variable on screen. Because the way pouch works is we're going to delete an object from the database. The database 
has all of these IDs that, that separate one class from another. So here we're, we're capturing that ID number, that CRN number. Next line. The pouch documentation says we, we have to do um, we have to we have to first check is that a valid class is there an ID in the database with what the person is asking if there is then let's delete it if there isn't let's give an error so we'll write here DB dot get open close parentheses semicolon And inside of db.get, we're going to say dollar the class. Right here, we're trying to check is there, try to get the CRN that the person typed. Let's try to get it. The result could be error, there's no such class as that. Or the result could be yes, there is that class, then let's delete it. So same sort of syntax we've seen before in that then there's a comma, space, function, parentheses, curly braces. We've seen that sort of syntax over and over. We're trying to do something, and then there's a callback function. Specifically with pouch, remember we've got error and result. So again, inside of the parentheses, error, comma, result. So what this is saying again, uh, let's try to get this document. Either we get an error or a result. So in the curly braces here, I'm actually going to break those curly braces like that. So I'm going to write a few things in the middle here. This could be one long line, but it'll look really weird, hard to hard to understand. So we're just breaking the curly brace. I didn't write another curly brace. Just break the curly brace. We haven't done that too often. We usually kept it on one line, which is fine. But here, since we're going to write several lines to get this done, I broke it to the next line. So in between there, line 91. <coughs> As I said, we have to do this in two parts. We have to try to get the document. If we did get the document in question, the class in question, let's delete it. So we've got db.remove. Open close parentheses. Semicolon. Specifically, we're going to remove result. So if we did get that, that class in question, it's a result. So let's get that result, and let's remove that, that class. Um, as we've been seeing with, with these pouch commands, dot .get, dot .remove, dot .put, and so forth, we have one option, comma, the result of an error or a result. So that's going to have us uh, the same thing there. After result, we'll have comma, function, parentheses, curly braces. Um, 
um, this is the actual command that removes the class. This is just to check do we have that class. Uh, we're on this level here because we did get a, we, we did get a result. We do have a class to remove. So now in this function, we actually uh, then uh, on screen um, update the table because we've removed the class, and then maybe um, put a message or something, or else we might have an error, and then we will say class doesn't exist. Let's um, try again. So inside of Oh, inside of this function, again, because it's the same sort of syntax, we will have again error, comma, result. Just because that's, that's, that's the syntax. This is a possible error or result of trying to remove it. And um, this is another instance where we're going to say a couple more, a couple more uh, commands inside of this callback function. So again, I'm going to break that curly brace to its own line, right there. And again, we have those two options. If we did remove the class, then uh, reload the table, because now the table has one less class. Or if we got an error, um, show the error on screen. So in this case, we will do an if statement, else statement. Because we have either the error or the result from trying to remove the class. So here's the result part, here's the error part. What we're checking for an if is a positive result. Were we able to remove the class? Yes. So what we'll do then inside the inside the if part, we will do uh, show classes. Show the table again. Show classes function will rebuild the table. Will reshow the table because now. There's, a, there's one less item in the database. We then need to show the table again because there's one less item to show on the table. And then for us as a developer, we'll do console log result. That might give me back also content that I could use as a developer to further improve the app. This else, this else then has to do with, okay, well, there might have been an error. Maybe that class, maybe someone wanted to delete one, two, three, but they, they, they type one, 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 and that class doesn't exist. So that's where the else could come in. So inside of the else, line 96, we're going to say, um, to make it really obvious to the user, we'll do an alert. In quotes will say, what's that? Exactly, uh, class not found, something like that. So we'll say, we'll do it like this. The class, we'll say, 
instead of just saying class not found, we'll tell them specifically class one, two, three, or whatever is not found. So we'll say the class CRN, that's in quotes, after the quote plus the class, whatever oh, dollar the class, whatever they type there, say the class one, two, three, is not found. So plus quotes again, space is not found. So we stored the class that they're trying to delete in that variable, um, line 88. So we're saying the class, whatever you wrote, is not found. And I've got a space there so that this class number is not bumped up right next to the word use. You do have a space there. There are other errors. So exactly, it, it could be that um, the database itself refused to delete it for some reason. So yes, this is where perhaps we can have that switch again. Remember, we had switch error 404, 409, etc. So that might be a little better. For the moment, let's just see if this works so far. I think at this point, we have enough for it to work. Try to delete a class that you know exists, and then hopefully that'll work. And then try to delete a class that doesn't exist and see what happens with the else. Oh, uh, before you check it, I would then do, uh, again, like I had up here, console.log, and this time error. So for the developer, put something into the console. What is that error? What happened Just to help me figure out what I can do? There's that error coming from here. There's that result coming from here. Let's see how that works. show classes. I have class 0000. So we can confirm here. I have a class which is just 000. Four zeros. I'm going to type 0000. Delete CRM. It uh, deleted it. It did the result part. It did show classes. So it gave me the new table without zero, class 000. The console then said something, okay, true. It did it. If I try to delete class 000 again, well, let me just do class 0. I know there's no class 0. Delete. Get a big old pop up. The class CRN 0 is not found. Type error. Cannot read property ID of undefined. It, it can't find that ID, it doesn't exist. So it was a couple of hoops to jump through, but then this is deleting. Ultimately, db.remove is what we're trying to do. We're trying to remove a specific class from the database. But we first have .get. Does it even exist? We're trying to check if that class exists. Error result. If, if it does exist, then we try to remove it, and we can deal with some error or positives, and then it deletes the class. Okay, uh, I've added an extra little thing here. I did this both on if result 
and else. I referenced that input box on the screen dot val quotes. Putting quotes that are empty will delete what's inside the input box. Because if they're trying to put in class 0000, it doesn't exist, let's delete what they're trying to put in. It doesn't work. If they did properly delete the class, I still don't want them to try to delete the same class. So again, we, we emptied out that input box. And this looks very similar to what I've got in 88, except the difference is I'm putting into that input box. Here, basically, I'm taking out the value, take it out, put it into this variable. Here, I'm just saying put it into that input box, nothing. Quote, quote, nothing. Therefore, blanking it out. So to show you, um, I've got class 111, 111, delete, deleted it, and it blanked my box. Very subtle thing, but without that line, it would keep the number 111 in there. And the person would try to delete it again and then get an error. So here I blanked it out by changing the value of that input box to blank. Just quotes with nothing inside. So we're, we're just about at the end of the day. We're going to do lab time in a moment if you didn't quite get it to work. But to recap, what we've done is um, we've shown these classes in a table. We've added the ability to delete classes with some details here and there. Uh, so we can add to the database, show the database, delete from the database, out of time. Next time, we'll talk about editing on the database. I don't want to just delete a class. What if I misspelled something? I want to change what I wrote in the database. That'll be for next time. Any general questions right now? Yes? Well, why is it that we put a placeholder in there mm -hmm. of uh, you know, 1, 2, 3 or something? Yes. How come it doesn't put that up? Placeholder is a special case where we've got here input type placeholder. It, it's sort of, it's just visual for people. It doesn't have any meaning to tell us. Does it come back in the result, uh, in the uh, uh, class? So here, I'm, tr I'm going to try to delete, I'm going to try to delete the placeholder. If yeah, I click it that, doesn't it. it doesn't see anything. Yeah. So, um, it's but it's just visual, visual for the user. It's not there in a sense it that... Exactly. The dollar the class. Nope. Uh, it's empty. Any other general questions? Okay, I'm going to put my code in the network folder if you want a copy of it, and then we'll do some lab time. Uh, when we come back on Thursday, we'll proceed.